Uh, hey everybody, Jason Grin just here. Wanted to share a video with our CNC guitar group here about how I recently approached the design and the build of a bass guitar neck. It's a 34 inch scale. Um, this video is gonna focus on the tool pathing. I, I really found this to be way more challenging than I thought it would be uh, when I set out to do this. Uh, I wanna shoot this video for really two reasons. A, to help others but it might be challenging with um, your own tool pathing, be it on a neck or the body itself. Uh, but B, um, I'm sure there's a hundred ways to do this. And if you know anyone in watching this video has other improvements or ideas to share where you've solved similar issues, I would be glad to, uh, to hear that in the comments um, with this post. So uh, first, just to get you acclimated with what I have, uh, this is a CNC that was home built, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of years ago. It's a four by eight. I don't recommend one this large. This was not built for guitar making. It was built for doing various other woodworking projects that I do, um, but I wanted to build a guitar. And so I had to really spend some time dialing in some um, flex that I had in my X axis, not so much in the Y, but in the X that was causing me to get some, oh, just a hundredth of an inch or two um, uh, variances on my tolerances in the width of a neck. And of course, that's enough to make the neck not fit well in the pocket. And so, you know, for those of you looking to buy or build a CNC for guitar making, man, the most important thing you can look out for, it's not so much Z travel or even XY travel, it's rigidity, rigidity of the spindle. If you've got any kind of play there at all, um, you've got to find a way to solve it. Uh, uh, there's not many workarounds for it. Uh, if it's there, it's there. But you will not be able to create, you know, good tight tolerances in guitar making if you have, um, you know, play in your in your CNC system. So let's talk about the tool pathing because that's what I wanted to uh, cover in this video. The approach I took kind of broke down eventually into three operations: the fretboard side, removing the fretboard and doing the truss rod cut and then flipping it over and doing the back. So before we drill into the operations on the fretboard, I'll first explain what's on the CNC when we start. These are just a few tests. This is a, a final product. This is a, a one of the final um, fretboards that go on another neck. And this was just a test neck that was, um, I think, fully done. Yeah, it's pretty much fully done. And then this was a test neck, just on a piece of plywood that I stopped um, mid mid operations. So in any case, the way I start with is a three quarter inch neck stock. And that's maybe six inches or five inches wide by, what is that, 37 inches or so, 36 inches. And then on top of that is sitting a quarter inch piece of stock for whatever the fretboard material is gonna be. And so those two pieces of stock are put together on top of each other and just in the four corners, screwed to the sacrificial bed of the CNC. That's it, that's how we start the tool pathing. So the very first tool path that is then done is to drill these 9 64 inch mounting holes. And that's these holes here in these tabs. And so right now the stock, stock is screwed to the bed, screwed to the bed through screws, as I said, kind of out here in these corners. And those are gonna be removed later. They're just temporarily holding the stock down so that I can drill these six mounting holes. So that's the very first operation. After they are drilled, I just use standard um, pocket hole screws. I find they're the best to use when securing stock to the MDF stock on the sacrificial bed. Uh, I might just put these down in to secure the two pieces of stock together again, uh, right to the bed in those six locations. The next thing I do is mill some alignment marks and all that does is make a little tick mark at the at the heel and a little tick mark at the headstock and what that allows me to do is those tick marks are, are designed to be in the center of this model and after those tick marks are milled i'll remove that bit and i have a c i have a laser on my cnc here that was designed um, at an angle, and so I can calculate the right height for the z-axis to be such that the dot that laser projects on the stock or the bed, whatever I'm going for, is in the dead center of the bit. 
So I can actually check alignment without having to worry about bringing the bit down to the stock or trying to run a, a test operation. I can actually lock the Z at a safe distance ahead of this, above the stock, turn the laser on, start the CAD operation, watch it move around, but the laser dot becomes what the bit will later be. And so that lets me make sure that I'm fully aligned on any cut uh, with the laser dot before I start cutting it with the, the mills. Okay, so that's what the alignment marks are for and, and how I use them to ensure that the, the neck is dead centered, right? Because if it's not, you're going you're gonna to cut a neck, but you may have features like this where you meant for this piece of wood to be in the dead center of the neck. It won't be, right? So that's uh, something you really got to watch out for in your, in your setup. Then I just start work, working through the features of the neck. The first thing I chose to do is to cut the dado for the um, nut here at the top of the fretboard. Then I cut, I switch bits to a quarter inch bit and I cut the uh, inlay dots for the inlays in the frets. Then I switch to an operation here that basically just cuts <laughs> Um, off any remaining fretboard stock that would normally be sitting over here above the headstock. And I do that because obviously you don't need fretboard stock here on the headstock. And I found that when I start later milling this little contour here where the fretboard and the headstock is milled to a little radius here, this part right here, if when I'm milling that, if extra, in this case, catalogs is, is protruding out here above the headstock, it becomes a danger. I had it kick off once on the CNC. So I decided just as a safety measure, I just whack off any extra fretboard stock that happens to be sticking. I don't have to worry about too much about centering things or making it, you know, the precise length. Because I really don't care at this point, right? I just glue it down, put them together. Or not glue it down, screw it down and put them together and then cut off any excess at this operation. Then I move on to the headstock mill. So now I'm back to a quarter inch flat end mill and I mill down, I think that's 0.61 is the height of that when it's done. And it also will cut out the tuning peg slots. I then move on with that same bit to the rough mill of the radius on the, on the fretboard. Um, this is a nine and a half inch degree radius on this particular neck. And so it does some rough slots here, as you can see, to rough mill it. I then switch to a ball end mill, a quarter inch ball end mill. And I do the fine milling of not only this radius, but also this hole here where later, of course, the truss rod access is. And as you can see, when the, when the fretboard is still in place, you can't cut all of the slot that you need because this board's in the way, but you can start to cut this part here that starts in the headstock. And so that's the next operation. So that gives me the ability, by the way, I chose to do it this way because I wanted to make damn certain I didn't have to hand sand this because I suck at hand sanding and holding this onto a, a you know a disc sander or something to get that radius. That seemed dangerous. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. So I'd rather the CNC do it, but that meant I wanted the headstock and the fretboard to be cut at the same time so that the radius um, you know looked good and, and was exactly the same the same radius and so that's why I chose to mill that um, with the two pieces together and then use a single operation like this to create that contour next I just cut the fret slots uh, that's a 0.023 bit in diameter very small bit that just goes down and goes back and forth very, very slowly, right, to cut your fret slots. And then lastly, um, the neck is pretty much, or sorry, the fretboard is pretty much done at this point, except that I need to cut the contour of it. And here again, I'm lazy, and so I don't want to have to hand sand these tabs off down to the contour of the neck. I'd rather the CNC do that so I know it's accurate. And so what I do here is I made another copy of this model where the tabs didn't exist. And so when I built the contour tool path for just the neck, um, it cuts right through these tabs, like they're not even there. And what that does is that gives you this as the result. And so this would have been sitting on top of the, well, here, this would have been sitting on top of the 
neck together on the CNC like that, right? But when it contour cuts the fretboard off, it just cuts right through the six tabs that were here, cuts the bottom and comes up to the top. Normally it would try to cut the top end here as well, but I go in and I manually delete that segment of the tool path. It probably wouldn't touch, but I didn't want to take any risk that this nice radius that the ball nose did would get nicked by the end mill, the flat end mill when it was doing the radius. So I can literally go in and just delete that portion of the tool path so that it's just cutting three sides, this side, that end, and this side. And when that tool path is done, you just grab the, the fretboard and here it is. This came, this, I haven't done any sanding or anything on this one. This one just literally came right off. You can probably see some of the fluting there from the um, fine uh, ball nose mill operation. So now your, your fretboard is, is pretty much done. And what you're left with then is the exposed neck. I guess it would be sitting on there this way, wouldn't it? Still screwed down to the sacrificial bed of the CNC. But now you have the top of the neck exposed to move on to the next set of operations, which are these, the truss rod operations. Not a whole lot going on here. They're pretty simple, right? So now that the top of the neck is exposed without the fretboard on there, we mill out the two different widths to fit the head and the rest of the shank of the truss rod. And then I also mill the rest of the access ramp uh, down through the neck to be able to reach the, uh, the hex nut right at the top of the truss rod. And then finally, we're ready to cut the contour. Now in this case, I do contour cut with the tabs so the bit is going to literally go right around the screws, the six screws here that are holding the stock to the bed. And when it's done, I get rid of all the cutoff material, throw it away, and I've got the complete contoured top of the neck still screwed to the bed with those six tabs. So I'm ready to flip it over. And I can go ahead and remove the six screws. And when I flip it over, as I mentioned, those tabs were only there and cut um, in place on the top side so that when I flip it over, I can reinsert these screws into the holes in the bed to realign the neck exactly where it was when it was on the front side up. And because I do that several times, I, I, don't, I didn't do it here, you don't, this is just a piece of plywood I've got sitting here, but I went ahead and I put some um, threaded inserts into my sacrificial bed so that when I do this with multiple necks, I'm not egging out a screw hole and getting some you know, sloppiness there in the accuracy. It's actually a brass threaded insert that I used that these six mounting screws went into. So when I flip over and put the screws back in, I've got really good alignment. Now, I can get really good alignment with just these two screws and just those two. In fact, I could probably do it with just that screw and this screw on the diagonal, right? So for sure, these center two tabs now don't really have any function. And so before I even put the neck back on the bed to do the back, I just go to the bandsaw and whack off these two tabs because they're of no use. They're just sort of in the way at this point. Lay it back up here on the CNC, put the four screws back in. So now I'm guaranteed to have the neck registered exactly where it was uh, when it was this way. And once that's in place, I go ahead and put a clamp here on the heel. And I put two screws in down through, well, they're not cut on this neck, but I would put two screws down in through this hole and this hole for the tuning holes, the tune uh, peg holes, so that the, I secure the neck at the headstock here and I secure the neck at the heel back to the bed. Well, at this point, I don't need these four screws now either. All they were done and put back in there for, again, was to register it. So I will remove these four screws next and then take a handsaw and cut these four tabs off as well so that they're not in the way when the CNC does the fine milling of the back contour. Again, I'm lazy. I don't want to have to hand sand these later uh, to match the contour, I would rather the CNC pretend those tabs aren't there, which is what it does, and just, you know, create that contour on the neck um, all by itself without, you know, having to worry about the neck moving because it's clamped in a different location. It's clamped down here and through the, the top. Okay. 
And so that really creates um, the last bit. Um, I don't have the body showing here on my model and it's hard to drive one-handed, so I'm not gonna do that. But as I just mentioned a second ago, these there's only two operations here, a rough mill and a fine mill. And what they're doing is the back contour. Here, I turn it on so you can see the tool pathing in blue. Here it's gonna cut right above the heel where the flat part starts transitioning into the to the radius. And then same thing here at the headstock where the flat part of the headstock, these blue lines, uh, starts to contour to the radius. And so if I flip my finished neck over, you can see that where those tool paths join. Now this hasn't been sanded much at all. Um, you can see some of the fluting on here that's happened from the, uh, the, the bull nose, the quarter inch bull nose uh, mill, but a little bit of sanding and um, this neck is pretty much good to go. I've also glued on the headstock or the uh, fretboard on this particular one. But when they first come off the CNC, I actually made it better than this. This was a test one that I did. You can see when I've cut those tabs off, they're still there a little bit because the uh, bullnose fine mill toolpath didn't quite go deep enough into the bed uh, to fully cut everything off. So I've later modified the toolpath since I cut this test so that when it's done, oh yeah, there you see a little more of the, the tab remnant was left there. I don't want to have to deal with that. You could sand it, right? It's maybe two minutes of sanding, but why do it if the machine can do it? Um, so what I did to get rid of that was I just put an additional 0.1 inch negative um, distance from the bed on that tool path so that when it's cutting that radius, it actually cuts 0.1 of an inch into the sacrificial bed as well so that the bed has no chance of leaving any of those tab remnants on the very edge of the radius here for the back. And so um, that was just a test that got me to eventually the final product and the final tweak tool path. It literally took about a month <laughs> to get from where I started my testing with plywood to moving up into hardwoods. I moved to hardwoods because as I said a minute ago, I had to dial in the sloppiness in my x-axis of this CNC and it didn't show up so much when you're cutting softwoods, but it definitely showed up when you're cutting hardwoods because, you know, the drag is harder on the bit, right? So I started switching to hardwoods to do test cuts and got the CNC dialed in. And now I'm to the final product of, you know, whatever color of wood or kind of wood you want to use for your headstock and for the shaft. Uh, throw it on the bed, walk through those tool paths I just walked you through, and this is what you'll end up with. I hope you enjoyed um, learning a little bit about how I approached it. Uh, I ain't saying it's right, but I think I've got a pretty good product uh, here in the end. I'd be welcome uh, to hear about any other approaches or, or comments that you guys have. In the next video, um, as I mentioned, I'd be happy to do a video on the body, which is sitting here. Uh, this is a Fender Jazz contour style, but it's a two and a half inch thick hollow body. Um, uh, guitar that the CNC um, also cut. Uh, it's all hollow inside here, and there's another set of tool paths that were generated to cut out this hollow body. So that could be another video down the road. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.